Welcome to this presentation of Floodplain 101 for Realtors. My name is John Hayes. I'm the Floodplain Coordinator for Santa Cruz County and I will be presenting this information to you today. The objective of this presentation is to strengthen your ability to provide the best customer service to your clients and to assist local communities and residents with identifying and reducing flood risks. On today's agenda, we will cover an overview of floodplain management. This is the first of four parts that we will cover to help realists understand the basics of floodplain management and floodplain regulations so that they have a better understanding and of the issues and may be able to more properly direct their clients when they have questions to be able to get the right information and the right answer. Some of the common questions that realtors will see from time to time when they're showing a property is does this property flood do I or will I have to get flood insurance for this property what type of development restrictions might this property have because it's in the floodplain the simple fact is that all properties have a flood risk and are in the floodplain I know it does not seem reasonable to say that, but it is correct. The reason for this is very simple, because the federal government said so. More accurately, when the federal government made the maps of floodplain areas, what they determined is three levels of risk. There is a high risk, a moderate risk, and a low risk. There is no such thing on the federal flood insurance rate maps as an area of no risk. Much of Santa Cruz County has been mapped for floodplain and it's been mapped by both FEMA and Santa Cruz County. The latest maps were adopted in December 2nd, 2011, and were part of an update to the mapping that started in 2006. The reason for the updating in the mapping is that the previous maps had been done on the 1948 series USGS topographic quadrangles. Those were maps where one inch on the map represented one mile on the ground. When those maps were updated to become the flood insurance rate maps of 1980 which were the maps for most of the the county at that time uh, up until 2011 there were areas where the mapping was so wrong as to be practically useless there was an area near Tubac and Amato where the channel of the Santa Cruz River was not in the floodplain and that was because there had been a berm in the 1940s in that location that berm washed out in 1968 but that information was not utilized in the mapping so they showed the berm from the 40s as still being there uh, in Rio Rico there were many locations where the tops of the ridges were actually mapped as floodplain and the valleys were not because of shifts that occurred in the floodplain boundaries National flood insurance is available in Santa Cruz County because the county regulates development in high risk floodplain areas. This is done under the county's fl current floodplain ordinance, which was adopted in 2001. So how does the federal government reduce flood losses and keep people safe? Well, for most of the country's history, the federal government did this by trying to control flooding, by building dams, by building levees and berms. Unfortunately, the more projects that were constructed to try to protect people, the more people would build in the areas protected by those structures. 
and eventually because structures are only designed to handle up to a certain size event we saw greater amounts of damages and losses when those events were exceeded or in some cases because those structures were not properly maintained they catastrophically failed by the 1950s it was more than obvious to the federal government that a change was needed they simply could not afford to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and getting the same results so the national flood insurance act of 1968 was created and under the ha department of housing and urban development or hud the first flood insurance program started with a regular program flood insurance would be available in exchange for communities enforcing floodplain management standards there was no requirement for those communities to enforce those standards it was just a requirement that if somebody wanted to buy flood insurance in that community the community had to have some sort of standard it was regulating too um, it created a subsidized rate for existing structures and required actuarial rates for new structures and this is because flood insurance is very expensive because floods are very damaging a few inches of water sitting in the house for a short period of time can cause tens of thousands of dollars in damages compare that to a fire which is much less common to occur in a house um, and typically does a lot less damage because it's more easily controlled especially if it's a small kitchen fire it also created flood insurance studies or FH FISs and the flood insurance rate maps in 1969 the program was modified to add an emergency program that was to limit the amount of insurance available for a given structure it also subsidized the rates for all insurable structures not just the pre-existing structures it also created the flood hazard boundary maps or FHBMs which were actually the first maps for most communities including Santa Cruz County Nogales and Patagonia these again were those original maps that were drawn on the 1948 series 15 minute quadrangles uh, again one inch on the map represented one mile on the ground so they were very rough maps 1972 the United States was hit by tropical storm Agnes and Agnes caused a lot of flooding along the eastern coast of the United States and it showed the, that incentives were actually needed to get people to buy flood insurance in those communities that actually were trying to regulate the floodplain you still didn't have many people buying flood insurance mainly because it was still very expensive so the foundations of the modern flood insurance program and floodplain management really got started in 1973 with the flood insurance protection act of 1973 this established the mandatory purchase requirements in other words if you have a property that has a structure and that structure is located or touched by a high hazard area as identified by the federal maps then flood insurance is required by law if it has a mortgage through a federally backed institution in other words an FDIC insured bank or a federal program like FHA or VA home loans it requ also required that the flood insurance administration notify all flood prone communities of their risk no later than june 30th 1974. communities were required to participate within one year of that notification or be denied federal assistance and federally backed mortgages within the special flood hazard areas what that means is that a mortgage that is through an FDIC insured bank or an FHA or VA home loan if the structure was in the floodplain it could not have a mortgage for all intents and purposes unless it went through a private bank
that was not FDIC insured in any way, shape, or form. Now, 1979, the Federal Emergency Management Agency was created, and the flood insurance program was moved from HUD to FEMA for oversight and control. Between 1980 and 1982, most of the original flood insurance rate maps were actually issued by FEMA and communities were required to have regulations in place. The original mapping for Santa Cruz County was August 1st, 1980. The original mapping for the city of Nogales was April 15th, 1981. So what does this mean? Basically, the federal government agreed to make subsidized flood insurance available within the community in so long as the community adopts and enforces floodplain regulations that meet, at a minimum, the standards of the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Basically, FEMA administers the National Flood Insurance Program. In Arizona, the state of Arizona at coordinates the administration of the program with FEMA. The counties and the cities and the towns are required to enforce the regulations necessary to make national flood insurance available within their community. By managing the floodplains in Santa Cruz County, what the county is actually doing is making flood insurance available within the county, at least the unincorporated counties. It is maintaining the county's eligibility for federal disaster relief funds. If we were not eligible for those, we'd only be able to get disaster loans, which have to be paid back. We are identifying areas of flood risk using the best available scientific data. We're guiding development and planning within areas prone to flooding and flood risk to help reduce the impact of flooding on our community in the future. And we're helping to provide discounts for flood insurance premiums for members of the community who purchase flood insurance. This is through what's called the Community Rating System Program. Santa Cruz County takes part and we're currently a class eight community, which means that anybody who is in a high hazard area in unincorporated Santa Cruz County that has to get flood insurance is receiving an automatic 10% discount. Now, there are over 9,000 properties in Santa Cruz County that are impacted in some way by a high risk special flood hazard area. Think about it this way. There's just over 40, uh, 45,000 properties in Santa Cruz County. This is basically one fifth of all the properties in the county are impacted in some way by flooding. So what can a realtor do or what should a realtor do? First and foremost, educate yourself and your clients about the property in question. Learn the flood risk get a flood hazard information sheet done by the county as soon as possible. The sooner you do it, the better. Uh, if you do it literally the same day that you agree to list a property, that would be ideal. The flood hazard information sheet will tell you if flood insurance will be mandated by federal law. There are five questions on the flood hazard information sheet that are answered for you. The first one is, does the property have a special flood hazard area on it, i.e. a high hazard area? Yes, no, or partial. Question number two is, is the main structure located in the high hazard area? If number one has a yes or a P for partial, and number two has a yes, flood insurance is required if there is a mortgage. It will also provide the information and flood insurance requirements to the prospective buyers up front. This way they have an idea of what they may be getting into. And then also knowing the restrictions and regulations will apply to the property if it's in the floodplain. If it's in Santa Cruz County or in the city of Nogales, that will be the county's ordinance, which was adopted in 2001. 
if it's in the town of Patagonia, it will be the town of Patagonia's ordinance, which was adopted, if I remember correctly, um, 2015 or 2016. But knowing this, you can protect yourself and prote help protect your clients and have the information up front. So, we like to say that flood aware is flood prepared, as well as turn around, don't drown. The more information you have that you're able to give your clients up front, the better they are able to make a decision. Technically, Arizona state law requires that within 10 days of closing, this information be disclosed to the, the buyer. We would ideally love to see this information disclosed right up front in the listing, if possible. And we'll go into that more at a later date. At this point, we're going to end here. If there are any questions, please feel free to contact us at the Santa Cruz County Flood Control District. My, again, my name is John Hayes. Our phone number is area code 520-375-7830. Again, 520-375-7830. My email is jhays, H-A-Y-S, at santacruzcountyaz.gov. Thank you.